Pambungad pa lang ito eh. Ano, meron pang mga information tayong nakukuha ngayon yung mga anomalies na nangyayari sa Subic. Yung tao niya sa Subic, ano niya yun, ano, dati niya uh, executive assistant. So maraming nagbibigay din ng information kung anong mga nangyayari dyan. Siya yung, uh, siya rin ang responsible. Kaya na-ease out itong si uh, Mr. Martin Dino na supposed to be, ano yan, kapartido yan ni uh, Presidente. Pero ganun ito si Senator Gordon pag nag-leverage. Uh, So, ang mga violations na ipinail natin ay itong una-una yung culpable violation of the Constitution that is conflict of interest, um, prohibition against legislators from having direct or indirect financial interest in uh, entities uh, regulated by their offices, etc. The next one is the violation of... Um, Republic Act 6713 or the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards of Public Officials and Employees. That is the prohibition against government officials having financial or material interest in any transaction approved by his office and prohibition against outside employment and other activities by government officials with entities which are regulated by his office. Third, plunder. Um, fourth, Malversation of public funds. Five, violation of uh, the Government Procurement Reform Act or RA 9481. And finally, the uh, violation of Section 3 of the anti graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Ang uh, amount involved dito, ang uh, na-discovery natin at ang naka-document dito ay 193 million pesos. Ito ay uh, yung mga PDAF na... Inallocate niya nung 2004, nung bagong halal siya bilang senador, inallocate niya ito sa Red Cross na siya rin ang nagdi-disperse. So, malaking uh, violation po yan. At uh, napag-alaman natin na in uh, several instances ay siya lang mismo ang nag-decide uh, nito without the concurrence of the other members of the board of uh, governors of Red Cross. Then, uh, there are several instances na may mga procurement sila na walang koneksyon sa uh, mandato ng Red Cross kundi ito ay may koneksyon sa kampanya ni uh, Senator Gordon noong uh, 2010 uh, pagbili ng mga campaign materials. Tapos meron din mga several instances na nag-procure sila na walang public bidding. So, yan po ang uh, laman nito. Pinagkakitaan niya ang Red Cross at uh, ginamit din niya sa pangangampanya niya noong uh, 2010. Wala naman ako tinatago kung yung amo niya na si President Duterte, wala mahanap sa akin eh, siya pa. Ano? Kasi wala naman tayong ginagawang mali. Pero dito niyo makikita yung pagpapanggap, ano? yung hypocrisy ni uh, Senator Gordon na kung uh, mag-preach siya doon sa Senate Blue Ribbon Committee, eh, kala mo santo, yung pala, ganito ang ginagawa. President Rodrigo Duterte is the most approved and trusted among the last four leaders of the country. Those are former presidents Noynoy Aquino, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, and Joseph Estrada. That's according to the comparative performance and trust ratings released by Pulse Asia on Friday. It shows that Mr. Duterte holds the record for the highest approval and trust ratings ever received by any of the four presidents. 86% in September 2016 and 91% in July 2016. Even President Duterte's approval rating last September 2017 was relatively high at 80%. The results released by Pulse Asia varied in terms of the frequency of its surveys. 
President Duterte met U.S. President Donald Trump at the APEC summit in Vietnam. It was their first face-to-face -face meeting. Special Assistant to the President Bongo posted on Facebook a photo of the two leaders. In a media briefing today, presidential spokesperson Hari Roque said the meeting was short and warm. He has yet to give additional full details. It is also not clear if they were able to discuss the administration's war on drugs, which has gained international attention. But Roque insists the Philippine government does not condone drug-related killings. President Duterte earlier said that he would like to discuss with Mr. Trump issues on trade, extremism, terrorism, and the South China Sea. Meanwhile, Bongo also posted a photo of Duterte having a cor cordial moment with the Mexican President Enrique Nieto. President Duterte sat down for talks with his Russian counterpart in Vietnam. Mr. Duterte met with Russian President Vladimir Putin at a resort in Da Nang City yesterday on the sidelines of the APEC summit. This is the second meeting of the two leaders this year since President Duterte cut short his visit to Russia in May to attend to the Marawi crisis. Mr. Putin praised Duterte for defeating local terrorists and reiterated Russia's commitment to improve bilateral ties, including in military and economic areas. President Duterte in turn thanked Putin for donating weapons and military equipment to beef up the country's counter-terrorism efforts. The high-powered firearms were turned over to the country last month. Newsroom comes your way at 12 noon. Keep it here on CNN Philippines. Hindi lamang si dating Pangulong Aquino ang nasa Sandigan Bayan kanina. Naudlot ang arrangement ng Sandigan Bayan sa mag-amang si Junjun at Jeje Marbinay kung din ang sinasabing overpriced parking building sa Makati. May mga nakap nakapila pa kasing mosyon ang kampo ng mga binay na hindi pa nareresolba ng korte. Kaya uurong na sa Enero 2018 ang pagbabasa ng sakdal sa mag-ama. Nahaharap sa multiple counts ng falsification of documents at graft ang dating vice presidente at malversation of public funds, falsification of documents at graft naman ang inaharap ng dating Makati Mayor na si Junjun Binay. Former President Noy Noy Aquino is back in the headlines. The Sandigan Bayan 3rd Division will get the ball rolling on Aquino's criminal charges in connection to the 2015 Mama Sapano clash. Our senior correspondent Ruth Cabal covered Aquino's media briefing this afternoon in Quezon City. She joins us on the phone. Ruth, the former president explained the Mama Sapano operation. Tell us more about that. Yes, Ina, first of all, uh, former President Aquino explained to the media why he decided to post bail at the Sandigan Bayan this afternoon. He says he expects the court to follow the process that after the filing of the information or the charges of graft and usurpation of authority against him for the 2015 Mama Sapano encounter, the court would most likely issue a warrant of arrest. He says he didn't want to wait for that to happen and decided to just exercise his right to post bail. He stresses it had nothing to do with whether or not he thinks the cases against him were weak or strong. He went to the Sandigan Bayan 3rd Division past 4 this afternoon accompanied by his sister party mates in the Liberal Party and other supporters and posted a 40,000 bail. He also underwent booking procedures. The ombudsman filed the charges against Aquino for the botched operations in Mama Sapano, Maguindanao, where 44 Special Action Force troopers were killed. This was for allowing then PNP Chief Alan Purisima to direct the operations, even though he was under preventive suspension at the time. From the Sandigan Bayan, Aquino gave a media briefing detailing the Mama Sapano operation, which was plotted to arrest international terrorist Sulkifli Bidhir, alias Marwan. Aquino insisted he ordered then staff commander Hetulio Napeña, who led the operation, to minimize the risks for government troops as well as coordinate with the military. Aquino says Napeña assured him he would do all these, but Aquino learned later that his instructions to Napeña were not followed. Uh, Aquino refused to comment or give any other um, statement with regards to the case against him, but he assures he will face, he is ready to face the charges. He says, Nandito ako, hindi ako umalis o nagpa hospital, and he says he has the truth on his side. The cases were raffled today and ended up at the Sandigan Bayan 3rd Division chaired by presiding Justice Amparo Cabuhate Tang, an appointee of Aquino, but Tang assures that uh, she will be objective and will fulfill the court's responsibility to dispense justice. She also says she doesn't see the need to inhibit from Aquino's cases. Nina? 
Thank you, Ruth Cabal there, reporting from Quezon City. We're learning more about the charges filed against Aquino, the schedule for arraignment and pre-trial set for January 12, 2018. Tinawag na sinungaling ni dating staff director Hetulina Peña si dating Pangulong Noynoy Aquino. Hindi raw totoong kumonsulta lamang si Aquino kay dating PNP Chief Alan Purisima na suspendido noon sa serbisyo. Tinutukan daw ni Purisima ang uh, Oplan Exodus. Itinanggi rin ni Napeñas na walang tamang koordinasyon ang SAF sa mga friendly forces sa Mama Sapano area. Masama rin daw ang kanyang loob kay Purisima. Halataraw na nagdadahilan lamang ang Pangulo o ang dating Pangulo dahil lumalabas na ang uh, umano'y naging kapabayaan nito sa operasyon. Ban Trump. That's what hundreds of protesters shout along Rojas Boulevard in Manila hoping to get near the American Embassy. But the police stood their ground. Tension ensued. Some protesters pushed the police as they try to get closer to the embassy premises. The expression of the continuous pagpapakatuta ng the government of Duterte in the Estados Unidos. He wants to visit, he wants to go to the number one terrorist in the world, but the people of the Mindanao don't want to go to the Mindanao. He doesn't want to go to the US Embassy in the US Embassy in the US Embassy. Authorities claim no one was injured among the protesters, but some of the policemen sustained scratches from the clash. The protesters are composed of indigenous peoples and moral groups. They denounce the Philippine government's magnanimity to U.S. President Donald Trump that they tag as the number one terrorist in the world, whose military is responsible for numerous human rights abuses in Mindanao. They smeared an image of Trump while calling on the government to pull out U.S. military troops in Mindanao. Mindanao is not for sale. Palayasin si Trump. Iban po siya sa Mindanao, lalong-lalong na po sa Pilipinas. Meanwhile, Amnesty International urges Trump to press the Philippine government to uphold human rights in the country. We are calling on, on President Trump uh, being uh, a world leader to um, demand that uh, President Duterte put a halt, put a stop <clears throat> to EJ case. The group also hopes Trump imposes conditions on the expenditure of the $32 million financial assistance the U.S. government pledged to the Philippine National Police in 2016. They say the U.S. State Department should make sure the funds are not used in the slaughter of alleged drug suspects in the government's anti-drug war. Trump is expected to arrive in the country on Sunday for the ASEAN summit. Makoy Popioko, CNN, Philippines. Sa kabila ng matinding paghahanda para sa ASEAN, hindi pa rin nawala ang mga sablay. Pinagpipiyasan sa social media ang mga welcome posters para sa ASEAN Summit. Kapansin-pansin kasi ang maling spelling ng Philippines. Nituloy maiwasan ng ilan na uminit ang ulo lalo at mapapahiyaraw ang bansa dahil dito. Pero ayon kay PCO Assistant Secretary Chris Ablan, hindi sila ang nagpakabit ng mga maling tarpaulin. Ipinatatanggal na rin daw ang mga ito. We are currently investigating the circumstances surrounding the distribution and display of the subject tarpaulins or billboards. These were neither printed nor distributed by the PCOO, the Philippine Information Agency, TIEZA, the MMDA, or the DPWH. President Duterte will be coming home tonight after his visit to Vietnam for the APEX summit. In his speech today, the president highlighted the need for regional economic integration through open trade and efficient market. He also says ASEAN can help boost APEC by championing open regionalism and being a regional pathfinder for APEX initiatives. The collaboration can improve digital and maritime connectivity, logistics, disaster preparedness, and business. In his four-day visit, Duterte reiterated his support for the growth of micro, small, and medium enterprises in the Asia-Pacific. Also on the sidelines of the summit, he met with Vietnam President Tran Dai Quang and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Nasermona ni NCRPO Chief Oscar Albayalde ang ilang police na nakadeploy para sa seguridad ng ASEAN Summit. Naabutan kasi niya mga ito na nagte-text habang naka-duty. Umaksyon si Jeff Caparas. Sa umpisa pa lang ng pag-iinspeksyon ni NCRPO Chief Police Director Oscar Albayalde sa mga rutang dadaanan ng ASEAN delegates, agad na siyang napahinto para sitahin ang mga nakadeploy sa Makapagal Boulevard. 
Ganito rin ang paalala ni Albayade sa mga inabutan niyang nakadeploy sa baklaran. Napakasamang tignan kapag dumaan yung mga bisita at tayo nakaupo o kumakain na lang doon sa lamesa natin. Okay? Kapag nakita nyo na kailangan ng tulong nyo, tumayo na kayo. Mag-initiative na kayo kahit may nakikita pa kayong MMDA dyan na nagtatraffic. Kung talagang hindi niya kaya, tumulong na kayo. Hindi yung tinitignan nyo lang. Alam nyo, there were uh, critics, several critics already na napapansin na pupun na tayo. Dadaan ka, titignan lang ng ganun. Parang wala lang. Pero pagdating sa mga nakadeploy sa may EDSA, tila naubos na ang pasensa ni Albayalde. Kaya ang dalawang ito na inabutan niyang nagte-text na sermonan na. Gusto yung kunin namin yung mga cellphone nyo? Kunin yung mga pangalan ng mga to? Kapag diniploy kayo, iho, para magtrabaho, naintindihan nyo? Hindi para mag-text, nakuha nyo? God sakes, oh. Ang titigas ng ulo nyo, iho, PO1 pa lang kayo. Sino nagsabi sa inyo, authorize kayo mag-text ng mag-text kapag nakadeploy kayo? Sinubukan pang magdahilan ng isa sa mga polis. Ika, ikaw, ano excuse mo, iho, at nagte-text ka? Wala kayong ginawa kundi mag-text na mag-text dyan eh. Nakita nyo nang dumadaan yan. Walang ibang dadaan na nakablinker dyan kundi yung mga VIP. Naintindihan nyo? Makikita tayo na wala tayong ginawa kundi mag-text, wala tayong ginawa kundi nakaupo sa isang tabi. Nakakahiya tayo. Naintindihan nyo? Make sure meron kayong magandang reason dyan ha. Nireport ko kayo sa region nyo. Babala ni Albayalde, maaaring masuspinde ang mga polis depende sa mga palusot ng mga ito. Mapapanagot din ang kanilang immediate supervisors. Dahil walang pasok sa susunod na linggo, hihipitan ng Manila Police District ang seguridad sa ilang puntahan ng tao gaya ng divisorya. Ang Philippine Coast Guard naman, magpapatupag ng no-sale zone mula tapat ng Okada, Manila hanggang H2O Hotel. No-fly zone naman sa ibabaw ng Luneta ang ipatutupad ng Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines mula November 12 hanggang 15. Ayon kay Police Chief Superintendent Noel Baraceros ng ASEAN Security Task Force, karamihan ng events ng summit ay gaganapin sa Metro Manila. Habang iilan lang ang nakaschedule sa Clark Pampanga. Handa naman na raw ang Clark International Airport sa pagsalubong sa ilan sa mga delegado. Marami pong government agency ay nakapailalang dito bilang pagsuporta para masiguro na maging masinop, maayos at safe ang pagdating at pagalis ng mga delegado sa 50th uh, ASEAN. Inaasahang darating sa bansa si na U.S. President Donald Trump, Chinese President Xi Jinping at Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau ang mga inaasahang darating sa bansa para sa ASEAN Summit at East Asia Summit. Umaaksyon, Jeff Caparas. Oy, sa mga may ninong at ninang na empleyada ng gobyerno, abay, huwag nyo nang antayin ang Pasko yeah. dahil pwede na kayong manghingi ng aginaldo sa kanila sa susunod na linggo. <laughs> dahil matatanggap na po nila ang kanilang year-end bonus na, eto may an, tax-free. Yun yung operative word. Ayon kay Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno, nagtabi na ang gobyerno ng 32.84 billion pesos. Para sa matatanggap na year-end bonus ng mga empleyado, sa November 16, sisimula ng pag-release dahil walang pasok sa mga opisina sa November 15. At ito pa po ang good news. Bukod dyan sa bonus, may matatanggap din daw na 5,000 pesos na cash gift ang bawat empleyado ng gobyerno. Pero para lang malinaw po, ang mga qualified sa bonus at cash gift ay ang mga apat na buwan at kasalukuyan pa rin nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno. Sabi nga, man's best friend ang mga aso. Pero ang Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency o PIDEA, hindi lang best friend ang turing sa mga aso, kung hindi special agents din. Isa-isang inamoy ng mga asong ito ang mga nilatag na maleta. Ang isa, kumahol sa natapatan. Habang ang kasama niya, 
umupo sa tapat ng isa. Ang parehong maleta, positibo sa illegal na droga. Kabilang sila sa drug sniffing dogs na sinanay ng pideya at gumraduate na sa canine school. Karamihan, mga naglalakihang breed. Pero hindi rin nagpadaig ang mga small but terrible. Pagdating sa skill, sir, same like sa malaking aso, sir, kasi nag-i-sleep din naman, mas mag i siya, sir. Kasi yung, yung endurance, sir, mas maano, sir, kaysa sa aso na malalaki. Ang advantage raw ng mga bulilit, kayang-kayang makapasok sa maliliit na espasyo. Ang isa, sir, 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 sa ilalim na hindi naman kaya ng malalaki, malalaki ito, kapasok siya. At dahil mas malambing daw ang maliliit na drug sniffing dogs, kailangan may hug muna bago magtrabaho. Gusto niya may konting lambing. Hindi katulad ng iba na labas sa kulungan, diretso kayo trabaho. Sa kanya, kailangan laro muna siya. Maglaro muna kayo at least one minute. Aminado ang ilang handlers na noong unay nahihiya silang maipartner sa maliliit na aso. Pero napabilibat na pamahal na raw sila sa mga ito. Kung baga sir, walang corny naman, laki-laki mo sa tapos nakagato yung aso mo sir. Pero pagdating naman sa trabaho sir, doon ko nila sir na-appreciate kung gano'n siya magtrabaho sir. Kabilang sa pagsasanay ng drug sniffing dogs, ang pagdetect ng illegal na droga sa mga kulungan, checkpoint, pantalan at airport. Nasa higit 20 aso ang nakapasa sa canine school ng PIDEA, pero nangangailangan pa raw ng marami ang ehensya para mapaigting ang kampanya nila kontra illegal drugs. Natukoy ang mobile patrol car matapos magsagawa ang QCPD ng backtracking sa GPS sa mga patrol car. Binusisiri na mga kuha ng CCTV kung saan makikita ang pagdaan ng mobile patrol unit number 235. Nagkalituhan para sa investigasyon dahil hindi na mukha ni Sandy ang mga polis na nakatalaga sa patrol car. Yun pala, hindi na i-record na nagre-level si Sena sa polis na umabsent. Saka lang natukoy si Sena na makita sa kuha ng CCTV sa gasolinahan ang paggaba niya sa patrol car. Nung in-enhance, 235 talaga siya. Nagtataka natin bakit yung crew doon na nakasakay eh hindi na-identify ng victim. Only to point out yesterday na yung palang isang nakasakay na, na passenger doon eh hindi siya talaga ang nakasakay during the patrol. Hindi na nakaalis ng Paco Station at tumirik na ang PNR train na ito. Alas 9 ng umaga kanina. Ang mga pasaherong inabutan namin, isang oras na raw naghihintay pero hindi pa rin umuusad ng tren. Bugnot na tuloy ang marami. Ang sabi, nasira daw eh. Walang announcement eh, hindi ba lang nag-abiso kung ano sira. Tusin lang yung serbisyo dahil maraming napiperwisyo, hindi lang kami. May mga hindi na nakatiis sa paghihintay at kanya-kanyang baba na lang. Pero pahirap yan ito dahil halos gadibdib ang taas ng tren. Ayusin muna, check muna na lahat ng main, ano nila, proper maintenance. Nagtaas sila ng ano, pamasahe tapos ganyan lang walang nangyayari. Ang 75 anyo sa si Lola Elvira, halos simatayin sa pagbaba mula sa tren lalo na at may rayuma. Bakit pinababayaan ng ganito? Aray ko, ang sakit ang to. <laughs> uh, delicious. <laughs>